we really hope that this is the first of our 100 stores going to open in worldwide. We really need your support to make this a remarkable, a new retail experience. That's why we open outside the mall. To celebrate our launching, soft launching, we are also giving 30% discount for all of you guys for the first purchase. Woo! All registered guests, okay, will be entitled for one spin of our Wheel of Fortune. Get up, it's made athletic feel comfortable and more confident during training or sports activity. Stay fit, keep healthy. again uh, let me share with you the third program of this young entrepreneurship development program how to pitch your ideas to investors 
basically a lot of times right, a lot of young entrepreneurs they say i don't know how to sell my ideas i'm not a good salesperson but you have to bear in mind that successful people have to do what have to do they are not choosing what they like or not all right that what make a difference between extraordinary people to ordinary people they're willing to take the extra mile to do what other ordinary people are not willing to do so you have to do something that you have to do first before you learn how to sell you have to sell yourself first people invest because of you the solution the business plan come later so you must able to sell yourself first there are only two f right in the three f that will support you without anything without any business proposals your families and your friends but the third f the fool will definitely need a proposal it can be a whatsapp it can be one page whatever they still need to see something a solid from you right so you must learn how to sell yourself first of course in a lot of times right we have to study the investors psychology their behavior so you know what you should talk to all these investors in my thesis for my mba i write i study a very thorough into this basically investors right there are two main factors that influence the confident level of they invest into any things first is complicated so when we when we pitching our ideas to investors try to simplify our business idea our business plan that is easy to understand don't become a rocket scientist that is so complicated that only Albert Einstein understand your business plan right try to be a layman understandable version and the second is fear the moment they think that is so complicated the fear right the fear factors uh, okay let's put aside of this business plan this business idea because i don't understand right so you have to overcome these two factors and of course the entire environment has changed tremendously back from the 30 years and now investors are looking at best risk reward profile gone were the days that okay uh, they are, they are, they, are, they are willing to take a very low risk a lot of appetite have changed they are willing to take slightly higher risk but the reward is justifiable and the second thing is also the liquidity a lot of investors right, they are not going they are not going for a long 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 term all right the 100 years they're looking at a liquidity stage where the next 3 years 5 years right on maximum maybe 10 years that they can see the investment return either whatever way all right so these are the liquidity stages that we have to justify to the investors and after 6 months 1 year 2 years right there is a as a plan for them right and then of course another thing that people environment the requirement also evolve they're looking at the strong net performance how this business can grow right and a steady deployment of capital every single dollar that invest basically invest back to the business and the second is volatility because people don't want to invest in something that's so volatile today i invest maybe tomorrow the money is gone so they're looking for something that is long term but at the same time are able to preserve their principal their capital all right and then of course the differentiation is is important is the key that you have to sell your usp that is different from another business so for example today you're opening up a burger store one is so different than mcdonald right you have to think something very unique different all right and then of course people are also looking at the soft side of the investment the esg okay what kind of business the business a model right that able to give a positive impact to the environment to the social with the proper corporate governance right people are looking at a different side of investment nowadays all right not just money 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 they're looking at a different value added to the society right and of course a lot of times right we always see opportunities during the crisis when all these things are happening the investors appetite are looking into the emerging market where they still can see a huge upside so during the current pandemic stages actually it also uh, give a very good impact right to the investors behavior they start to slow down and see what is the right thing to invest so it's something that is able to turn around the entire industries right these are the things that they will like to invest so if we are in south asia india and china right i think this is a very business proposal okay proposition and then of course what is the best way to approach investors 
there's no one fixed formula for all. Every time when we approach the investors, you may have to tweak a little bit here and there. But there are a few fundamental things that we always have to remember. It has to be simple yet memorable introduction. In a very short span of five minutes, maybe you only have the opportunity that the investors give you five minutes, tell me your business plan, right? I will consider either I want to invest or not. The golden five minutes is where you have to make the investors remember yourself and also your business, all right? Sometimes, all right, we also have that very limited, even less than one minute. So within the one minute, maybe in the lift, right, from level 30 until the ground floor, this is the only time that the investor says, tell me what you have, all right, I'll consider, all right? The, 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 the 10 seconds, the 20 seconds, the 30 seconds, it's where you make him to want to know more or he just say, thank you very much, all right? Come back when you are ready, right? And then of course, the right industry and the right geographical. Not every investors have a very strong risk appetite that they would like to invest in a foreign territory in an industry that they do not hit and tail, right? People will tend to invest in something that is familiar or within their reach, right? So when you have a very good business plan, right? Maybe start with investors that staying around that area. Let's say Kuala Lumpur. Try to find someone that's within that territory, share with them your business plan and likelihood they will invest because they're familiar, right? Geographical and they can understand better. This business will be successful in that territory. And then of course the tailor pitch. Every investor comes from a different walk of life experience. So our pitch right, must able to tailor meet to each and individual of investors so that they can understand and to attract their interests, right? And then when you try to pitch your ideas to investors for money, there are a few guidelines that you can use, right? That help me a lot. First, clearly presenting the margins, the numbers, the figures. Of course, we can say the entire things, the value add and whatever, but the bottom line is it has to be profitable, right? What is the profit margin before tax, after tax, right? Is it justifiable or not? People are investing in any business, not just because they want to believe in your vision. They also hope that the money work harder for them so that every single dollar they invest, it make a return back to them. So it has to be realistic and professional. Something that is measurable, that they can see the milestone at every stages of the business, right? And it has to be realistic. Today, we cannot just go out and tell the investors, my business is bulletproof, whatever, whatever, we can make 100 billion in the next one year, right? And it has to be prepared in a professional manner. Your cash flow projections, all your returns and your risk and all that, it has to be very professionally designed and prepared, right? And the second pointer is it has to show a steady growth. Any business that is stagnant, basically, we know that the business either go into troubles, right? Or there's no uniqueness at all the business anymore. So investors want to see the money keep on working hard for them. From a dollar, it grow to $10, to $100, to $1,000, right? So the business growth must be there, right? There are a lot of ways that you can use this, right? Maybe start from a small tar tar target market, then later go to a different target market, right? A different countries. So you must prepare all this in the pipeline. And the number three is very clear business model, right? People invest because the business model is very clear. They know what is the target market, the target reach out, and what will be the product and services. It has to be very clear. And in any business that we invest, I always look at the three S. The first S is sustainable. We want to invest in a business that after six months, one year, from the profit, from the business income, they're able to sustain the business. We cannot just continue pumping money, pumping money, pumping money. All right, It will not sustain. The second S is scalable. Why the, a lot of times right, the investors love to invest into technology-based business? Because the moment you come up with a framework, the, 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 the system, the engine, you can duplicate the same in another market, in another different uh, segments, right? So I'll give you a very good example. Like today, Grab, right? one of our, the reference that I always use. After they have these entire systems, right, the Grab systems, then later, they can scale up to other countries. They can scale up to another uh, ePay, whatever, right? 
that the important is the scalability because this is where they can see the business can continue to grow. And the third S is socially responsible. Like just now in my previous sharing, people no longer just look at the dollar and cents. They also hope that the business can contribute, right? Can help a certain group of people to achieve either their business income, or whatever, to change the line, whatever, right? The socially responsible is very important, okay? The ESG. And then number four is problem. What kind of problem that these businesses are able to solve? The bigger problem statements, right? The more attractive the business is. And of course, the investors also understand that you try to solve the bigger problem, you need more resources, more capital, more human talent, and so on. So you have to put every these details in the business plan, in the business proposal. It has to be very clear. And which are the target market, all right? The group of users that you're able to solve their problem. Either it's 1,000 people or it's the entire world that you're able to solve this problem, right? And then number five is you are different from competitors. A lot of investors, right, they love to invest in something very new, something that they never heard of. It's not just another Grab, another Uber, whatever. They want to invest in something very new, but also something that's sustainable. So you have to tailor yourself to what is the USP? What is so different from the competitors, the nearest competitor out there? And you have to have something that is priority, okay, propriety ownership. It can be patents, trademarks, copyright, whatever in any of this that nobody can replicate. The entry barrier is so high that your nearest competitors may take the next five years, 10 years to duplicate the same. So this is what a lot of investors are looking at, all right? The harder, the, the, the higher the barrier entry, the entry barrier, the better it is. And then of course, business, not just about you yourself okay, as entrepreneurs, it's always about a team. So you have to be able to gather a group that help you in a different department, different division, right? Maybe sales and marketing, maybe in the admin, maybe in the finance or whatever. And these are the talent that you have to secure. You have to have a synergy with them, okay? Sometimes you have to think out of the box. It may not be just the salary package. Maybe you also can offer a good deal with them, right? The ESOS, whatever, that they have a sense of ownership in your team. Whenever the investors, sometimes some of the investors, they love to talk to your team. They can see the passion. They can see the experience in them. They think that, okay, this is the right team that's able to turn the business to a next level. So you must have a very solid team to help you in your business. And then, of course, a lot of investors, like, they don't want to just listen and see the positive, positive. Seems like it's risk-free investment. Every business, every investment comes with a certain degree of risk exposure. So as an entrepreneur, when we pitch our ideas to investors, we have to put this up, up front. What will be the risk, right? Maybe in the next three months, this will be a risk. And it's okay because I already have a plan A, plan B, plan C. The worst case scenario, what will be the risk exposure and how we can mitigate it. For all investors, when they see this, you have all this in mind and you even have a strategy to overcome it, you will impress them, all right? Don't hide this under the carpet. You have to upfront and tell them what will be the risk exposure, right? And then, of course, for any business, if you want to drive up the revenue, you must have a rainmaker, someone that's able to sell your product, your services, right? To expand the market, expand the business. So you must have a strong salesperson in your team, right? Always remember, you may have the best products, best services in the world, but if you don't have a team, you don't have someone that's able to sell the solutions to your customers, right? You can just put in a frame and put it in a museum. You must have a strong team, the sales team that's able to sell your products and services, right? Remember that. And then, of course, for investors, we always look at what is the exit strategy. For any business plan, if you come with this, right, at every, let's say, at every milestone of the business, three years, Okay, this is an exit plan for the, maybe the seed level investors, seed capital level investors. And maybe in the next five years, there's an exit plan for the institutional investors. You must have a milestone, maybe at different stages, right? You allow a certain level of investors to exit so that they can continue to realize their profit and continue to support you in your business growth, right? And then, of course, the big salary. 
a lot of times, right, entrepreneurs, of course, we have a lifestyle, we have to meet, but you have to sacrifice at the early stage of the business, all right? Whenever, as investors, we see there's a big paycheck for the entrepreneurs, sometimes it also can be a turning off period, turn off, all right? Because we, we know that every dollar that we invest, it should go to the business growth, all right? Maybe later, when you set a certain achievement, a milestone, KPI, then only you go for a bigger paycheck, right? Always sacrifice at the early stage because every single dollar is so important to grow the business. And as a summary, always do your research. Know who you are talking to, right? There's no one fixed formula for all and figure out what's the best way, approach to capture their attention, their interest, the willing to take the journey together with you, right? And you have to continue persuade them to invest. Maybe there's a no-no now. It's okay. Maybe after three months, six months, when you have a different achievement, go back to them and tell them that, hey, my business, I come to a certain level and I would like to share with you my milestone, right? Trust me, after three months, six months, one year, three years, 10 years, one day, right? Either they will invest or they will regret, right? You have to have that kind of mindset. And then, of course, you know that all these approaches is the best way to talk to them and, and, and persuade them to put their dollar in your business. But you also have to understand what will be the biggest turnoff for any investors. Especially some investors, right? They feel they want not just invest in capital, but they also would like to contribute their resources, maybe their technical know-how, their, their network, all right? That they're able to add value to this business. Right? Everyone wants to be part of the business they invest. So the moment that investors talk to entrepreneurs, and these entrepreneurs seem like they know everything under the sun. Right? They are the most successful entrepreneurs in the world when they only have a business idea. Right? Sometimes it, it, it will make them the feel that this guy will, may not want to learn and he just bulldozer and do whatever he wants to do. So you have to have that in mind. Right? And always remember, after consistent pursuit, right, if they still continue to say, no, no, it's okay. One day, either your business, you tweak and change and revise accordingly, come to the best investment plan, the best business plan, right, one day they will invest or they recommend to you, right? Never give up, never give up. And when it comes to all this, right, I would like to share with you again, the, the most important thing is attitude. A lot of investors, right, they invest not just because of the business plan, not just because the beauty, how beautiful is your video, your presentation slide, but the attitude of the entrepreneurs, someone that they feel comfortable to work with you, right, to share their resources with you. So always humble, very okay, hungry for success, but always maintain the humble, right? You may achieve a certain milestone, but always remember you always need someone at a different level to help you to boost your business to a next level, right? And how many times should we try, right? To share our business ideas and pitch our ideas to investors so that they will invest, right? There's, if you ask me, it depends what kind of level of success that you want to achieve. You want to become like another KFC success story. You have to be approached 1,009 times before that person Say, this is the business that I will invest. This is something that I want to be part of it. All right? Like Thomas Edison, he has proof 10,000 ways to make that light bulb. All right? So we have to be prepared for that. We have to be prepared that every single time when we pitch our idea to investors, it's a curve for us to learn to improve our business ideas. All right? Because everyone comes from a different walks of life, have a different exposure, knowledge, and resources. So the moment we feel that, that every time when we talk to someone, we are not just talking about money, but also the experience, the know-how that we try to learn and adapt into our business. So you have to keep on trying, never give up, right? And then by doing how many times, okay, how we have that kind of passion to keep on pitching our ideas for the 10,000 times. Like this is one of my role model, right? Steve Job, do what you love. Love what you do every single day, every single second, and you'll be successful. People will want to invest in someone that's so passionate with their dreams, with their desire to successful. And they know that the dollar that they invest 
will make something back to them. All right. So I really hope that after learning from this uh, part three, you have the idea of what kind of strategy, what kind of approach that you want to talk to your investors to pitch for money. And my number four sharing will be how to spot the right deal to invest. So as an entrepreneur, beside you understand yourself, you also need to understand the behavior, the thinking, the mindset of any investors. Right? What are the considerations? They would, the, all are checkbox they will do before they invest. Right? And then for investors, okay, I would like to share with you right, all this experience and knowledge and all this that you're able to let the money, make the money work harder for you. How to make big money with small capital. So I will see you in the next program. Thank you.